What if the volcano of greatest concern in California is not Mount Shasta, not Lassen Peak, and not any of the towering volcanic cones that dominate textbooks and hazard maps, but instead a nearly invisible cluster of lava domes hidden beneath a dusty, receding inland sea? Why would such a modest volcanic feature suddenly be classified as a high-threat system? And how could something so small pose a meaningful risk to thousands of people in Southern California? Beneath the southeastern edge of the Salton Sea, a shallow and shrinking lake in the Imperial Valley, five small rhyolite lava domes sit quietly their presence betrayed only by faint hills, steaming mud pots, and the smell of sulphur on hot desert days. Most travellers pass the area without ever realising they are skirting an active volcanic system. Yet the Salton Buttes are now formally recognised as one of the most concerning volcanic features in the state. The questions this raises are unsettling. What is powering the intense heat beneath this otherwise flat landscape? Why has this obscure volcanic field drawn renewed scientific attention? And could a volcanic surprise erupt from the desert floor with little warning? The Salton Buttes volcanic field occupies a stark and unlikely setting. It lies roughly 140 kilometres, or about 90 miles, southeast of Palm Springs, in California's Imperial Valley, only a short distance north of the United States-Mexico border. The terrain is flat, agricultural, and dominated by irrigation canals, geothermal facilities, and the retreating shoreline of the Salton Sea. Over the past century, fluctuations in the lake's level have alternately submerged and exposed the volcanic domes. For much of the 20th century, parts of the Salton Buttes sat underwater, hidden beneath the lake's brackish surface. As water levels declined in the early 21st century, the domes re-emerged, revealing low, rugged hills surrounded by geothermal wetlands and salt-encrusted flats. What appears to be a quiet desert margin is, in fact, one of the most geologically dynamic regions in North America. The reason lies deep beneath the surface. The Imperial Valley sits within the Salton Trough, a tectonic depression created by the gradual pulling apart of the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate. This is not a simple fault boundary, but a complex zone where strike-slip motion along major faults transitions into crustal extension. The southern end of the San Andreas Fault System does not neatly connect to a single fault line. Instead, motion is transferred through a series of faults, including the Imperial Fault and the Brawley Seismic Zone. The result is a pull-apart basin where the crust is being stretched, thinned, and heated. Over geological time, this stretching allows hot material from depth to rise closer to the surface. As the crust thins, pressure decreases and rocks at depth begin to partially melt. In the Salton Trough, this process has produced a shallow zone of partially molten rock, effectively a magma reservoir, located only a few kilometres beneath the surface. This magma body is not a large, well-defined chamber like those beneath major stratovolcanoes, but rather a complex network of melt lenses and hot, crystal-rich magma. Even so, it represents an enormous concentration of heat. Geophysical surveys using seismic waves have imaged this zone as an area where seismic waves slow down, a classic indicator of elevated temperatures and partial melt. This hidden magma body is the engine that drives both the volcanic history of the Salton Buttes and the intense geothermal activity seen today. One of the most striking indicators of this underground heat is its industrial use. The Salton Sea geothermal field is among the most productive in the world. 
Eleven geothermal power plants currently operate in the region, tapping superheated fluids from wells drilled several kilometers into the crust. Together, these plants generate approximately 432 megawatts of electricity, enough to supply power to roughly 400,000 homes. Steam and hot brine extracted from the subsurface are used to spin turbines, after which the cooled fluids are re-injected underground. This cycle continues day and night, effectively turning the volcanic heat beneath the Sultan Buttes into a constant source of renewable energy. The scale of this geothermal development underscores just how anomalously hot the crust is beneath the Imperial Valley. Plans are already underway to expand this capacity significantly. New geothermal projects, some integrated with lithium extraction from the same hot brines, are expected to come online in the latter part of the decade. If these developments proceed as planned, the total power output of the region could grow enough to supply electricity to between 500,000 and 700,000 homes. Few places on Earth combine active tectonic stretching, shallow magma, and such extensive geothermal exploitation. In effect, the Sultan Buttes volcano already plays a direct role in the daily lives of hundreds of thousands of people, even if most of them are unaware of it. Given this extraordinary amount of heat, it is natural to wonder why the Sultan Buttes have not produced a large, conspicuous volcano. The answer lies in the nature of the magma and the scale of eruptions. The Sultan Buttes are extremely small by volcanic standards. Their total erupted volume is estimated at roughly half a cubic kilometre, or about one-tenth of a cubic mile. This is a minuscule amount compared to major volcanoes, which can erupt tens or hundreds of cubic kilometres of material over their lifetimes. Even the modest eruptions at Iceland's Fagradalsfjall in the early 21st century produced comparable volumes of lava in a matter of months. The physical expression of the Salton Buttes reflects this limited output. Rather than forming a tall cone, the volcano consists of five low lava domes. Their highest points remain approximately 40 metres, or about 130 feet, below sea level, even though they rise slightly above the surrounding land. These domes appear as squat, steep-sided hills rather than towering peaks, yet their small size should not be mistaken for harmlessness. In volcanic systems, Composition often matters more than scale. All five domes are composed of rhyolite, a lava type rich in silica. Rhyolite typically contains around 70% silica, far more than basaltic lava. This high silica content dramatically increases viscosity, making the magma thick, sticky, and resistant to flow. Rhyolite erupts at lower temperatures than basalt and behaves almost like molten glass. When it reaches the surface, it does not spread out in long, gentle flows. Instead, it piles up near the vent, forming domes that grow upward and outward as more lava is extruded. This viscosity has critical consequences for eruptive behavior. Gas dissolved in magma struggles to escape from rhyolite. As magma ascends, pressure decreases, and gases such as water vapour, carbon dioxide, and sulphur compounds exsolve, forming bubbles. In low viscosity magma, these bubbles can rise and escape relatively easily. In rheolite, they become trapped. Pressure builds until the magma fractures or explodes. This is why rhyolitic eruptions are often violent even when the total volume of magma involved is small. The Salton Butte's eruptive history reflects this dynamic. Geological studies indicate that the volcanic field erupted during at least three distinct episodes over the last 3,000 years. 
The earliest known eruption occurred roughly three centuries before the Common Era, forming what is now referred to as Mullet Island. This event appears to have been relatively modest, but still involved explosive activity. A second eruption followed around the beginning of the Common Era, producing Obsidian Butte. As its name suggests, this dome is capped by obsidian, a natural volcanic glass formed when rhyolite cools rapidly. The eruption that built Obsidian Butte included explosive phases that generated ash and pumice, along with pyroclastic flows. The most recent eruptive episode occurred around two centuries into the Common Era and produced three closely spaced domes, North Red Hill, South Red Hill and Rock Hill. Whether these formed in two separate eruptions or a single prolonged eruptive sequence remains a subject of scientific debate. What is clear is that explosive activity accompanied dome growth. Pyroclastic flows composed of hot gas, ash and fragmented lava swept across the surrounding landscape. Field evidence shows pumice fragments scattered several kilometers from the vents, indicating that eruption columns lofted material into the air before it fell back to the ground. These eruptions were not large on a global scale, likely corresponding to a volcanic explosivity index of around two. Yet they demonstrate that the Salton Buttes are capable of producing hazardous phenomena, including pyroclastic flows, ashfall, and ballistic projectiles. Importantly, these eruptions occurred in the recent geological past. Two thousand years is a short interval in volcanic terms, and the absence of historic eruptions does not imply extinction. The tectonic setting explains how such silicic magma formed in an area otherwise dominated by basaltic volcanism associated with rifting. As the crust beneath the Salton Trough stretches and thins, basaltic magma rises from the mantle. Instead of erupting directly, much of this magma stalls in the lower and middle crust. There, it transfers heat to surrounding rocks and interacts chemically with older granitic crust. Through processes of partial melting, assimilation, and fractional crystallization, the magma evolves toward a more silica-rich composition. Over time, pockets of rhyolitic magma accumulate. When faults open pathways to the surface, this evolved magma can ascend and erupt. Today, there are no active lava flows or growing domes at the Salton Buttes. However, the volcanic system remains restless. Degassing continues across the field. Hot springs, fumaroles and mud pots dot the southern shoreline of the Salton Sea. These features release steam, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and other volcanic gases. The persistent odour of rotten eggs is a direct result of hydrogen sulfide escaping from the subsurface. Carbon dioxide bubbles through mud pools and geothermal ponds, sometimes in volumes sufficient to visibly disturb the surface. These emissions indicate that magma remains at depth, continuously releasing heat and gas. Seismic activity provides another clue. The surrounding region experiences frequent earthquake swarms, particularly within the Brawley Seismic Zone. These swarms reflect the ongoing movement of faults and the deformation of the crust. While most of these earthquakes are tectonic rather than volcanic, in origin they demonstrate that the crust is fractured and permeable conditions that could allow magma to rise if pressure builds sufficiently. If magma were to ascend toward the surface again, scientists expect the eruption style to be predominantly explosive. The combination of viscous rhyolite, abundant dissolved gas, and shallow magma storage creates conditions favorable for violent activity. Pyroclastic flows and surges represent the most serious hazard. 
These fast-moving clouds of hot gas and volcanic debris can race across the ground at speeds of hundreds of kilometers per hour, incinerating and burying everything in their path. Even a small eruption could produce such flows, especially if a growing lava dome collapses. Ashfall would also pose a risk. Explosive fragmentation of magma would generate fine ash that could be carried downwind for several kilometers. While unlikely to affect major cities, such ash could disrupt local communities, damage crops, clog machinery, and contaminate water supplies. Ballistic blocks and bombs, chunks of lava hurled from the vent, could impact areas within a kilometer or more of the eruption site. Given the low relief of the area, there would be little to shield nearby infrastructure. Other hazards are more insidious. Volcanic gases released in large quantities could accumulate in low-lying areas, displacing oxygen and posing a threat to humans and animals. Carbon dioxide is particularly dangerous because it is colorless and odorless. Acidic gases could damage vegetation and corrode metal structures. Interaction between hot volcanic material and groundwater could trigger steam explosions, further amplifying hazards. These risks are not merely theoretical. The Salton Buttes sit in a region that is sparsely populated but far from empty. Small communities lie within several kilometers of the domes, and critical infrastructure, including roads, canals, and geothermal facilities, crisscrosses the area. Approximately 2,500 people live within the immediate volcanic hazard zone, and many more depend on the region's agricultural and energy systems. An eruption, even a relatively small one, could have outsized economic and social impacts. For these reasons, the U.S. Geological Survey has elevated the Salton Buttes to high-threat status. This classification does not imply that an eruption is imminent, but rather that the combination of volcanic hazards and human exposure warrants close monitoring. Instruments now track seismicity, ground deformation, and gas emissions in the area. Any significant change in these signals could provide early warning of renewed magmatic activity. There is no cause for alarm, but there is also no justification for complacency. Volcanoes are notoriously patient. They can remain quiet for thousands of years before erupting again. In geological terms, the Salton Buttes are young, active, and still connected to a living magmatic system. They are an oddity, a tiny rhyolitic volcano hidden in a rift zone, quietly powering homes while exhaling sulfur and steam. For Southern California, the Salton Buttes serve as a reminder that volcanic risk does not always announce itself with dramatic peaks and snow-capped summits. Sometimes it lies beneath flat ground, masked by agriculture and industry, its presence betrayed only by heat, gas, and subtle movements of the earth. The challenge is not fear, but awareness. Vigilant monitoring and scientific understanding are the best defences against surprise. In a region better known for earthquakes, the Salton Buttes stand as proof that volcanic forces are also very much alive, waiting patiently beneath the desert floor. If you found this deep dive eye-opening, do not let it stop here. Take a second to like this video. Share it with someone who would never expect an active volcano beneath Southern California. And subscribe for more investigative science content you will not hear anywhere else. And most importantly, tap that hype icon right now. It tells the algorithm this story matters and helps push it to a wider audience that deserves to see it. Your support is what keeps these hidden stories from staying buried.